Hey everyone, welcome to the Hornet King channel, and in this video, I'll be removing a massive German yellow jacket colony that made its nest inside of a client's bedroom wall. And this thing was right behind his headboard, and he could hear them buzzing and chewing and rustling around inside the wall cavity, so he called me to come and get them out. So I came out, I cut the nest out of the wall, vacuumed everybody up, and brought it home to feed it to my animals. Here's the video, check it out. I'm the Hornet King, and I removed some incredible and insane wasp nests. up underneath this window here. So these are German yellow jackets and they were able to make entry into the wall cavity from underneath of this window. Now our houses here in the United States are just horribly made. They are made out of two by fours and drywall and vinyl siding, which is super easy for any kind of pest to get into the wall cavity. So that was what was happening. They were finding a compromised spot from underneath the siding and making their way in between the plywood on the, well, it wasn't even really plywood, just particle board on the outside wall and making their way into the cavity space. And they started building this nest. Well, once the nest gets to a certain point, they need to expand it to make it bigger. So they start chewing away the wall material. So they were chewing away the particle board on the outside wall and they were chewing through the drywall on the inside wall. And when you see me start to remove this nest out, you can actually see the vinyl siding through this wall hole, um, through, or through the hole in the drywall. And knowing that they're able to chew all those spaces out and they were practically through both sides is pretty incredible. It's not so much saying as much for the yellow jackets as much as it is for the poor quality of our houses here in the United States. Uh, we do have some old houses that are made out of brick and stone and everything else, but majority of our houses that are built like 1950s and on are made out of two by four studding and drywall or plasterboard and like some kind of plywood on the outside wall and it covered up with some decorative vinyl siding or aluminum siding which our houses are meant to breathe here so there's corrugation and perforations into our homes and it allows for any kind of pest insect to get into and in this case yellow jackets to get into the wall cavities ceiling cavities flooring joists whatever so first thing I do is I start vacuuming up the individuals and start cutting the hole a little bit bigger so I can extract this nest out in its entirety. I try to keep the nest whole because if I start separating the layers of comb, that's gonna be releasing all the ones that are kind of hunkered down in between the layers. It's gonna release them into the cavity and that's more I have to vacuum up later. I was able to close off this room from the rest of the house so I wasn't too concerned about the yellow jackets getting out of the wall space. It's more just for how long I'm going to have to be there and how much extra work I'm going to have to do if I'm releasing a bunch of yellow jackets into the, into the space, which you can see I was already releasing a lot into the space anyway. So the homeowner was fine with me cutting whatever I had to cut to get them out. So I was just making it easier on myself by cutting the hole just a little bit bigger. Uh, is really no different to repair a 20 by 20 inch hole of drywall or a 10 by 10 inch hole of drywall. It's virtually the exact same thing for the person doing the repair. Um, so just taking my time and vacuuming up a lot of the adults as I can as I see them crawling out from between the layers of comb. You can already see that there's a lot out from between the layers of what there were when I first opened up the cavity. And um, so just making a few extra cuts, getting this thing kind of square or rectangular depending on how you look at it. And um, and then making a hole big enough that I can pull the whole nest out in one solid piece. In this colony, there's probably anywhere from 2,500 to 3,500 individuals at peak season. Um, that fluctuates. That's not like that's not a finite amount at, during the actual production of the nest. Um, that net that number will fluctuate. So it's not like there will be like you know expanding until they reach that number. That number is accumulative over the course of a time. That's the peak amount of numbers. So. 
workers are being replaced as they die out in the field. They're dying naturally with inside the nest. Uh, the queen will die. Uh, larva die. But I'm just guesstimating at the peak season when there's the most amount inside the nest at one time is 2,500 to 3,500. So it's it gets a little bit confusing when people say, oh, there's 3,500 here right now. I'm not saying necessarily here in this particular shot there's 3,500, but just over the course of the expanse of this colony at its peak season, there was probably 2,500 to 3,500 individuals in this nest, which is absolutely insane numbers. But you can see that this probably had about 10 layers of comb. I honestly didn't even count them, but there's probably about 10 layers of comb here. And... For every patty of comb, there's tons and hundreds of individual cells which the queen will lay eggs into, which then develop into adult wasps. So you can kind of just guesstimate by how many holes there are. They probably reuse some of the cells a couple times, um, which I show a little bit later. You see some eggs laid, multiple eggs laid into the same cell that had already been used. So um, there's some theories out there that yellow jackets do not reuse the same cell twice. That's that's a uh, faux pas. That's a misconception. They actually will reuse the same cell a couple times. Um, but at the end of the season here, a lot of the individuals that are in the nest are new males and queens. That also trips people up. They often think that there's only one queen. Well, there is. There's only one founding queen. But at the end of the season, the queen starts laying what we call reproductives, which become males or becomes female queens. Uh, what differentiates the difference between a female worker and a female queen is that the queen is able to be reproductive. She's able to mate with a male and then start her own colony the following season as a queen. Uh, workers cannot mate. They can lay eggs. They have an ovipositor. They can lay sterile eggs, which become males. The queens can lay fertile eggs, which become female, or an unfertilized egg to become male. So it just depends. But look at the size of this nest. I mean, this nest was humongous. Uh, which might even be an understatement. It was enormous. Uh, just the amount of weight to this thing. It's only paper and insects. That's it. But the thing has weight to it. has bulk to it. But look inside this cavity. Now that I put that nest down, look at you can see the light coming through. So it's actually glaring through the vinyl siding. The, the only integrity on the outside of this wall was vinyl siding, which is just absolutely insane. So just vacuuming up some more, and then here, look at all these adults. There's a lot of these are males, a lot of these are queens. So towards the end of the season, the queen will start laying reproductives, which become male or queens, and they kind of just hunker down inside the space until it's time to leave and mate and start their own colony for the following season. So once the new queens mate with a the male, they fly off and hibernate somewhere and wait out the winter time to then reemerge in the spring to start finding a new place to live to start her own colony. So all these colonies, all these individuals were started by one single founding queen. All of this comb, all of these numbers, everything was founded by one single queen, which to me is just absolutely insane. The amount of numbers of eggs that she has to lay a day, because these nests are start like late May, early June. I'm removing this at like late August, early September. And you have to think that in that short amount of time, these thousands of adults have been hatched. And that's just incredible numbers. And that's an incredible feat of, of work for a single wasp to do. Um, of course, as the, 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 as the colony progresses, time goes on, uh, workers start laying eggs too. And that's how males are formed and things. But um, there's some speculation that the queen can lay a lot of male eggs. And she's the only one that lays male eggs. But that's, not, that's a faux pas too. That's not really true. Um, in my studies, the, the, I've seen female workers laying eggs that become males. So it's, it's just a, it's a really wild structure. And it's a, sometimes towards the end of the season, it's a little bit of a battle between the queens and, and the female workers as to who lays eggs and, and whatnot. And sometimes the, uh, the workers mutinize against their queen. Uh, that's not uncommon either. Uh, sometimes I open up these nest cavities and I pull out um, nests that don't have any queens at all, but there's a lot of males inside, which means they probably either killed their queen and mutinized against her, or she died naturally and the workers just start laying eggs because there's no queen there to police them anymore to keep them from laying eggs. So it's just a tornado of information I know I'm throwing at you guys, but uh, I just find it super interesting. Um, there's a lot of misconceptions out there, especially on YouTube, about how uh, wasps, how they... How they mate or how they develop nests or even just simply the how they breathe. I've seen some YouTube videos of explanations of how 
uh, wasps breathe, and people think that they they breathe like they absorb oxygen through their skin, which isn't technically true. They have spiracles, which are the segmented parts of their abdomen. So their abdomen pulses and kind of acts like an accordion, and that draws air into those spiracles to uh, process oxygen um, to be able to you know function with their muscles and things. So that's how they breathe. So when I suck them up into my vacuum, I don't put soapy water as much in my vacuum anymore like I used to. Uh, just regular water is fine. They're going to drown. The, uh, the centripetal force of the wasp being sucked into the vacuum usually kills them. But if it doesn't, then the water kind of finishes them off. Look at all these adults that I'm sucking out from the top here. So this is why I leave windows closed but leave like the blinds pulled open. So that way that the yellow jackets are attracted to the sunlight and they cake around these windows. And then I can just, at the end of the removal, I, after I seal up the hole, I just suck them right off of the window and it makes my job super easy peasy. There's a few still floating around inside the space, but for the most part, they're going, you know, pretty much right to the window. So you'll see here, some are still moving around. People often ask like, well, what do you do with the ones that are still moving around? They're not going to last very long there. Um, I usually just kind of dump them out the way they are. Some of them, if they're new queens, they can fly off and maybe start a new colony around my house. I'd be totally cool with that. I wanted to feed some of the larvae to my squirrels, and um, so I was just kind of tweezing them out. Some people like to see the tweezing, so I decided to tweeze out some of the larvae, the squirrel to have to eat. So you can see inside of these cells, you can see a couple little small eggs that are attached to the bottom of the cells, and these cells have already been used once. And you can tell that because it has meconium at the bottom, which is the stool of the pupating adult. And so at the end of the their pupation, they start releasing their waste through their abdomen, and it kind of cakes to the bottom of the cell. And uh, once they emerge, then the white silk cap is being chewed off by the adult to get out. So there's a little tiny fringe at the top of the cell, there's black junk at the bottom of the cell, and now there's an egg inside of there. Well, it's already been used. This is a reused cell. White caps used to be. And look down inside, you see that there's, there's multiple eggs down in there. There's an egg there, but then some of them have like three eggs in a spot. All right, that's probably good enough for now. And then when I'm down there, you snap the picture. And... I just go feed the squirrel. <clears throat> All right, the squirrel's been in the playhouse. Meatball squirrel. Meatball squirrel. Hey, little bell squirrel. There she is. Hey, little bell squirrel. Come on, yeah, you smell the larva? Come on. You smell the larva? Ooh, mm hmm, then that's more good. Come on. Are you ready? Here. Here. Some yummy larva. She's not even trying to gut them. She's just eating them whole. Oh, rain in the face, squirrel. Girls, you go. Oh, she's dead. Dead nest. Yellow jacket nest. <laughs> Find a queen in here anywhere. <laughs> 